this is my first high power rocket and since the last flight and repairs I decided to make some modifications to it. The most significant is the cutout here which I have uh, added a base of fiberglass overlapping the, the body tube and my intent is to take a, a standard off-the-shelf camera uh, this, uh, in this case, a Kodak uh, camera that's fairly thin in cross-section. Uh, and to start it up in video capture mode, snap it into the recess there in the rocket, and put a couple of wraps of duct tape around to hold it on, and hope that that is uh, sufficiently secure and aerodynamic uh, to uh, fly up straight enough. The camera only weighs about a quarter of a pound, but that adds enough weight to the rocket uh, to where I'm going to uh, go to a, a motor uh, with a bit more thrust. I plan to fly it now with an H242T, uh, which uh, will generate about 12 Gs of uh, thrust initially. The other modification I've made is to add an altimeter bay to the nose cone. What I did was to take a uh, the top of a Coke bottle, simply cut that off, glued tubing on the inside uh, that holds this uh, out uh, 15K a recording altimeter from Perfect Flight. Uh, so it's the right size to hold it, and there's a foam pad inside. And the um, tube with the uh, bottle cap is simply epoxied uh, into a hole that I cut in the nose cone. So the plan will be to install the battery and then quickly drop it in, add a foam pad, cut to size, and screw the uh, coke cap on and we'll see if we're able to uh, get a, an altitude recording. I drilled a couple of uh, holes in the nose cone and these uh, two allow equalizing pressure with the with the altimeter. Of course the location of these vent holes is far from ideal because it's close to the curvature of the nose cone uh, but it, it may be good enough to get us some kind of altimeter measurements that make sense, at least on the way back. So, with a little luck and a good uh, roll of duct tape, we'll shoot it off with an H242 and hope for the best. Oh, the red light. Yeah. It's on. All right. Bye, Rocket. Good luck. Bye. Good luck. There's a rocket called Dodos on uh, Pad 3. The camera's been duct taped to it. You'll find an H242. Everybody smile. You did a nice job on that. Thank you. Ready to go in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Spinning too bad, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
It's old motor? Oh, come on. Stay out of the corn. You don't do that far more. Come on. Down. It's big enough. He might get it. It may stay on corn. It's going to be in the middle. Okay. Yeah. But is that? I don't know. It's not. Let's come on back this way. All right. That's five. That's Oh, man. All right. Four. Four. Oh, okay. Good deal. Guys are clear. Hi, Rocket. Oops. Hi. Well, you look okay. We'll turn this way. Hi, Rocket. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth. <laughs> Lovely flight. Well, Looks we survived at least. Like the uh, no damage to the parachute. Don't know if it can auto focus after the G forces, but so. Uh, put, put it on you. This is the data we recovered from the perfect flight out 15K altimeter that was sent up with uh, the camera rocket. The black tracing is smoothed altitude data, y-axis labeled in feet. So we see there was a peak altitude of 1,450 feet. Rocket ascended and then descended slowly on parachute. The uh, deployment of the parachute was slightly before apogee, since there, uh, this noise occurs slightly before the peak. And the slope of the decay curve is about 20 feet per second, consistent with the slow descent we observed and the soft landing. The red trace uh, represents the uh, first derivative, or slope, of the altitude data and represents the vertical velocity of the rocket. It's a noisy trace because of uh, noise uh, in the altitude data, but still shows the basic features that we would have expected. Uh, there's a rapid increase in velocity to a peak of around 350 feet per second, all occurring in approximately 1.2 seconds after liftoff. That's consistent with the duration of thrust of the motor and also with our expectation um, of the uh, acceleration, 300 uh, um, being about uh, 300 feet per second squared or about 10 Gs. This phase of the curve represents the slowing of the rocket as it continued to rise after motor burnout. The noise 
is the ejection with deployment of the parachute and then the velocity uh, settled to a stable value of about minus 20 feet per second as the rocket descended on the parachute. Then with the landing, the velocity actually comes up to zero as the uh, altitude data uh, stabilize at zero. So a successful flight uh, and very consistent data with what we observed from the altimeter.